In the last video, we learned a little bit about Mongoose, including how to create schemas and set up a connection. In this lecture, we'll start using Mongoose along with Express and Node.js to query objects and to display results. So in this lecture, we're going to be building a mini app. We can start out by navigating into a folder where you want your application to be. So I'm going to copy this folder location into my terminal. I'm going to create a new directory and I'm going to call this mongoose ex. I'm going to cd into that folder. So now you can see the folder is created and I'm going to go into it. Now I'm going to create a couple of files for this folder. So I'm going to create an app.js file and I'm going to also create a model. So our model will be called book.model.js. It's very common to capitalize the name of your model. Now I'm going to create a package.json by using npm init. And I'm going to enter just anything into these. The entry point will look towards our app.js file. So if we open up our package.json, we can see it's pretty much empty, but it just gives us the initial scaffold. And I'm going to install three NPM modules for this project. And those modules that I install will show up in this package.json file. So we can say npm install dash dash save. And we'll be using express, mongoose, and body parser. Okay, and with those added, let's open up our app.js file. The first thing that I'm going to do is set up a very simple server and then test that it's running. So I set up an instance of Express using our app variable. And that will allow us to add routes and start our server. Body parser will allow us to grab elements from the front end as well as parameters within our URL. And of course I'll require mongoose. I'm going to assign a variable to our port and I'm going to name it 8080. So in order to access our server in a browser we'll navigate to localhost-8080. And to start our server all we have to do is say app.listen and pass in our port. I'm also going to add in a callback function to let us know that our server has been started. Okay, now I'm going to save this file and go into my node terminal and I will say node app which should fire up our server and we also get the message app listening on port 8080 so our server is working and it's listening on our port. Now the next thing that I want to do is create our book model schema. So remember we create a book.model.js file. The first thing that I'll do is require mongoose. The second thing that I'll do is create a variable for our mongoose schema. And just like in our example, I will create a book schema. I'm going to create three fields for a book schema, a title, an author and a category. And finally, I'm going to export our book model schema so that we can use it in other files. I'm going to save this file and now I'm going to require this file in my app.js file. The difference between requiring files in our app.js file and requiring node modules is that we have to specify the location. So we're requiring in this book.mol.js file that's located in the same location as our app.js file is located. With our schema created, we can go on to creating a location for our database and connecting to that 
database using mongoose.connect. So just like in our example, I'm going to set a variable for a database. And I'm going to keep on using the same database that we used in the previous example, which is a database called example. And below that, I'm going to use mongoose.connect to open up our mongoodb local instance. And it will connect to this database example. So now I'm going to save this file and I'm going to try to start our server again. First I'll kill the server and then restart it by typing in node app. And we'll see that we get an error thrown. So it did start up our server but then we immediately got an error and then our server shut down. So you'll always see the same kind of error whenever we forget to start our mongod instance. So now if we go back and type in mongod, it will start up our Mongo server. And now when we go back to restart our server, it should work. Okay, so we get the message listening on port 8080 without our error message. And with Mongod started, we're also able to log into our shell. So now we're logged into our shell and we have our server running. Let's use our example database and let's show collections in our example database. So one very interesting thing to note is the fact that books got automatically generated when we loaded up our node server even though our schema is called book. So our schema is called book and once we started our server we automatically got a new collection named books. And when we go to db.books.find it's empty. So I can say db.books.find.pretty and it's still empty so there's nothing in there but it was automatically generated. And what's most interesting is the fact that it's pluralized. So whenever you're creating a schema, MongoDB will automatically pluralize the name of the schema that you create. So at this point, I'm going to insert three books into our books collection. Okay, and these are the books that I'm going to insert, and I'll provide to you this file. You can just copy it over now. Basically, I'm just going to copy this into our Mongo shell. So it's going to insert each one of these books into our books collection. It says write result one. So now if I say db.books.find.pretty it should show these three books that I just added and it does. So now we have three books that we can find and read and update. So now we're going to add a couple of routes for retrieving all of the books in our database and for retrieving just one book from our database that we define. In order to do that, we'll be using Express and we'll be using the app.get method. I do have a free course on Express basics or fundamentals that you can watch to learn a little bit more about some of the stuff that we'll be talking about. But for now, it's, it's really easy to set up and use routes. What we need to do is specify the location where we want the route to be, and then we can pass in a callback which takes a request and response object. Request is anything that we get back from the user, such as when they're typing something into an input field and we want to get that. Response or res is what we give to the user. So we can say res.send and we can pass in a message. So here I'm just going to pass in a message so that when a user navigates to our index route location, they'll see this message, happy to be here. So now if I save this file, 
Now I'm going to restart our app. Now if I navigate to localhost 8080, I should see this message. Okay, great. And I see the message, happy to be here. So that indicates to us that our express routing is working. So the first route that I'm going to create is going to get all the books from our database and display them on a web page in JSON format. So in order to do that, all I need to do is say book.find. So book.find will use our model that we've defined up above and then it will pass in the find method. Within find we could pass in anything that we want so we could specify with a name or with an ID. If we don't specify anything meaning we just put in an empty object we will get back everything that's within there. So if we take a look at mongoose queries we can see a couple of examples find one we'll be using in the next example but below that we have find and you can see how they're passing in specifically what they're looking for so occupation age they're limiting they're sorting and then finally they're calling execute right execute with a callback so that's what we're gonna do after we find all the books we're going to execute say dot execute and it's very standard to pass in two parameters, an error and the response of what we're getting. So what we're going to get back is a list of all the books. And this is basically a, a variable. So books could be results. It could be anything that you want. But we're going to call it books. And I messed up. This is a callback, right? A callback that receives two parameters. Then first we're going to check if there's an error. So if there's an error, we'll respond by sending an error message has occurred. And if there isn't an error, that means that we were able to get back all of our books and we'll send a JSON response listing out all the books. And we'll also log the books in our console so that we can see them that way as well. So now when I navigate over to this route, which is going to be localhost 8080 slash books, I should get a JSON response with the three books that we've inserted, as well as a message in a console with the three books. So now if I save that and then restart our server, I have an error on 25. So this, yeah. Okay, app listening on port 8080. So now, if I go to localhost 8080 slash books, okay, look, now I get the printout of the three books that I've added. And let's also check our console. And we can also see that we get a log of the three books that were added. Okay, so that's what we were hoping for.